Hi, welcome to IBD School. I'm Lauren Van Dam, Registered Dietitian for the Division of Gastroenterology at the University of Michigan Health System. I provide nutrition counseling to patients with a variety of gastrointestinal disorders here in the Taubman Center. Nutrition interventions for patients with inflammatory bowel disease such as Crohn's and ulcerative colitis can include diet changes to help reduce GI symptoms, address specific nutrient deficiencies, achieve a healthy weight, and improve overall nutrition status. The topic for this segment of IBD School is the low FODMAP diet. While there is no diet to cure IBD or reduce gut inflammation, a diet low in FODMAPs may significantly reduce symptoms for people with IBD who are in remission or not experiencing active inflammation, but are still symptomatic. FODMAPs are a group of poorly digested short-chain carbohydrates found in everyday foods. Instead of being broken down and absorbed into the bloodstream, these carbohydrates travel through the GI tract, bypassing the small intestine. They are then fermented by the bacteria in the colon and produce gas as a result. For people with a sensitive gut, this can mean unpleasant symptoms including bloating, distension, gas, and in some cases, significant abdominal discomfort. FODMAPs also have an osmotic effect, which means they pull water into the intestines, contributing to loose stools or diarrhea. The word FODMAP is an acronym that describes these poorly digested carbohydrates. It stands for fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols. Fermentable means that they produce gas. The oligosaccharides, or short chains of linked sugars, include fructans and GOS. The disaccharide, or double sugar, is lactose. The monosaccharide, fructose, is only a problem when in excess amounts compared to another sugar called glucose. Polyols are sugar alcohols, such as sorbitol and mannitol. Rather than remember these scientific names, you can just call these carbs FODMAPs. FODMAPs are found in a variety of foods, even some healthy fruits and vegetables. Here's a look at some of the foods that are highest in each of the FODMAP groups. This chart is not meant to be a complete list, but rather to provide a general overview of the main sources of FODMAPs. Lactose is a sugar found in milk and is high in certain dairy products. Excess fructose is found mainly in fruits like apples and some sweeteners like honey and high fructose corn syrup. The main sources of fructans in GOS are wheat, onion, garlic, and legumes. Lastly, polyols are in pitted fruits like peaches, as well as some vegetables and sugar-free gum and candy. Wondering what you can eat? Here are some examples. FODMAPs have a gradual and cumulative impact on symptoms, so small amounts may be tolerated fine, but large quantities throughout the day may surpass your threshold and can trigger symptoms. The best approach to see if you are sensitive to these foods is to eliminate them from your diet for two to four weeks and see if your symptoms improve. The next step is to reintroduce the high FODMAP foods back into your diet one at a time and find out which ones cause symptoms so that you know which foods you should limit or avoid. Because this is a complex diet, patients are likely to have better success when working with a registered dietitian who has expertise in the low FODMAP diet, rather than navigating through this diet approach on their own. During the first appointment with the RD, you can expect to not only receive comprehensive food lists showing you what you can and cannot eat during the elimination phase, but you will also learn how to read food labels to avoid hidden FODMAPs in packaged and prepared foods, get personalized meal and snack suggestions, and low FODMAP cooking tips that are tailored to your lifestyle and cooking skills. Ultimately, working with an RD will help you gain confidence that you can eat a nutritionally balanced diet that tastes great and soothes your gut. Generally, two to three nutrition visits are needed to complete the elimination and reintroduction phases of the low FODMAP diet, depending on your individual situation. Other nutrition concerns, including achieving a healthy weight, can also be addressed and may require additional visits. If you are interested in reducing your GI symptoms through diet therapy, speak to your gastroenterologist about a referral to see one of our registered dietitians specializing in IBD and the low FODMAP diet.